So uh, a few details that you may not have caught up with. I am going to share a screen here with you. Uh, I want to show you what I did on uh, PB Works. I do believe that's it. So hopefully you can see the home page of the wiki. Uh, if you take a peek under assignments, they're located here. This takes you to the list of things that you need to uh, that we'll be submitting as time goes on. Uh, they're under a little bit of flux, so we're only kind of maybe a week ahead of one another, but you know, no problem, and you'll see why they're in flux momentarily. Uh, the video page I've reoriented, so you can check in here. Uh, basically, what this allows us to do is have individual pages for each of our sessions. And in last week's session, where we first started talking about mind mapping and word clouds, uh, what I did was I was able to embed the video, but at the same time, uh, put some basic instructions in here for you guys so you can kind of catch up. Uh, if you want to start using mind mapping, you've got access here. And then, of course, I have some of the R commands. And so this way, the R commands are in an individual uh, spot within the same lecture page. So I thought that would make things a little bit easier if you want to go back and rework what we're doing. OK. Now, hopefully, I'm going, let's see. Uh, I'm going to kick back and show you one more thing. I'm going to stop this share. And what I'm going to do is share our Anaconda screen. <clears throat> so I've already started Anaconda. Hopefully you have all gotten to the place uh, and where uh, you want to double check and make sure that your Anaconda installation is up to date. So you want to make sure and double check your preferences. Usually, if you just restart Anaconda, it will actually go ahead and uh, let's see, I'm going to move these screens a little bit here. Uh, it will go ahead and uh, automatically update for you. Uh, as I mentioned before, Anaconda tends to be a little bit slow when it comes to installation. So you really want to take your time a little bit and make sure and do these things uh, before we get to class. I, I know it's a little bit of a pain, but uh, I, I don't think it's really that burdensome. This, this course is more about the intellectual capacity and what we're learning by doing things rather than having these uh, constant quizzes and certainly there are no exams. So it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I want you to notice uh, two things here. Uh, I have our studio already set to go. And so I'm going to actually use uh, Anaconda to launch my R Studio. You can do this however you're going to use R Studio. You can always just launch it from uh, your command line or double click the R Studio icon if you're using Windows. Uh, I know that a few people have Macs and that they've used Anaconda to load our studio. Uh, again, because our studio, uh, our studio is actually fairly easy to load. The problem is R itself, the base installation of R is a bit of a pain, uh, depending upon what version of the Apple software you're running. Uh, the old versions, uh, require something called Xcode, which if you have an older Mac, uh, Xcode allows you to have a graphic interface uh, for some of the terminal programs, which of course, remember, R runs in a console or a terminal. Uh, R Studio is the graphic interface. So if you have an older Mac, you've got to use Xcode. If you have a newer Mac, there is a defined package. Uh, however, it's just as easy to load Anaconda and then run R and R Studio from Anaconda. So that's what I've got here. 
the one thing I do want you to notice is that uh, a recent addition to Anaconda is the IBM Watson Studio. This app uh, in Anaconda actually gives you access to the data analysis that's present on IBM's Watson supercomputer. So this is a brand new thing. Uh, it used to be uh, one of those, you, you needed an IBM account uh, and you had to log on directly to the IBM servers. And then sometimes you can get console uh, access depending on who you were and who you asked. Uh, to IBM Watson's. Now it's actually regulated right through Anaconda. So we will actually get a chance uh, probably maybe Thursday, definitely next Tuesday to use IBM Watson computer. And I think you'll get a real sense. I'll show you a few slides I made uh, using it. And I think you'll get a sense of why it was so good at Jeopardy that it could beat all those people in Jeopardy and at chess, et cetera. Uh, really, uh, really a neat application if you're interested in data analysis of any kind. So hopefully that's something we can get to. So I wanna pick up where we left off. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch my R Studio, and you probably wanna do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my Anaconda screen, although if you're still watching, boy, that blue bar in the bottom right hand uh, corner just keeps going. It never, ever stops, but I'm going to stop that share. It takes forever, uh, and I am going to share my R Studio screen with you so that you can see R Studio. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do this, so just give me a moment. Uh, let's go over just a couple of more things about our studio. Again, reminding you that in the top left quadrant, uh, we have access to basic text files. So you can use this area to actually just write text. And you can see I've got a couple of different things uh, already installed here. Notice I have the packages we're going to install here shortly. And then I also have how to load the library here. Now, I've made these notes. They're in a text file. And uh, notice what the text file does is it color codes the words automatically. There are a handful of software packages that you can get that will uh, do the same thing for you. Uh, the ones that are most popular if you're using Windows is something called Notepad++, and you can actually download it. It's a free uh, programming type text editor, uh, so it'll do the same thing that's here on our studio. Uh, the other one that I kind of like is called JEdit. Uh, JEdit is a text editing programming or coding file editor that will also do the same thing, except it's running Java. And because it works in Java, it will work in any operating system. So you can use JEdit in, with Windows, a Mac, or a Linux or Unix type computer, so it's really kind of handy. Uh, I like, I've used both of them routinely. Uh, if we were in the, <clears throat> excuse me, if we were in the computer lab, uh, I've got Notepad++ uh, loaded in all the uh, <clears throat> stock and computer labs so that people can use it. It's way better than the uh, Notepad, which is the standard Windows text editor which is really a piece of crap. Uh, I, I would delete that or at least get it off your home screen. Uh, if you need a text editor and you're running Windows, go to Notepad++, anything else, JEdit. Uh, however, for our, our work, uh, this really is a handy thing to have is a little text editor in our upper left quadrant. 
The lower left quadrant is our console. And it's here that we type in the commands that we're ready to do. So, and in fact, I've got the commands listed up here in the text editor. We're just gonna retype them down here to actually begin loading packages. Now, as I mentioned before, the huge advantage, one of the advantages of R is that you can install these packages as you need them. So if you think about it, every program takes up a certain amount of memory space. Okay, not a hard concept, right? If you have a statistical analysis package, for example, SAS, uh, jump, SysStat, uh, MATLAB, whatever, all of those that are possible for you to uh, and may have used elsewhere, all of them come with every single possibility already built into the software program. So they have a very, very large footprint. What do I mean by footprint? It means they take up a large chunk of the memory in your computer. What R does is R takes up a very, very small amount of space for the base package, which is what happens when you just install R, okay? And then allows you to only have the packages that you need. So it keeps the memory footprint very small. Because the, memory, because the footprint is so small, it means that there's more space for you to run your analyses, okay? So you have more memory. So if you're doing a complex analysis that requires, for example, inversion of matrices, all right? You can invert a much larger matrix in R than you can in any of the other software programs just because R leaves you more free memory space to actually do the work. So we've got the, we're going to go ahead, let's go ahead if you have to install some of the software onto your computer, we're going to go ahead and do that now so we can walk through it together. If you did it already, don't worry about it, chill. Uh, but what I do want to show you is that there are a lot of ways to do it. You can actually, so our first package that we're going to install is this TM package. And so you could type here, install, notice the word packages, highlights. So I'm just going to click on it and we're going to load, remember, always quotes, we're going to load TM. Now, this is one way to install package, a package. However, remember, we've got a graphic interface, all right? The advantage of the graphic interface is that there are many ways to do different things. So one thing you could do is go up to the tools section and notice the first option in the tools section is install packages. So you can click, and now it asks for what package would you like to install? Well, notice the first one, TM shows up, and you always want to install the dependencies, and then you can click install. Or, that's a second way to install packages or in the lower right-hand quadrant of our studio, notice we have kind of our directories. So it's just looking at like our file manager or notice one of the tabs says packages. And in the top left of the bar is a little icon to install. Uh, one advantage of this is this now has all of the packages that are already installed in R. So sometimes you can look through and say, well, gee, did I already install TM? So you can go through 
And lo and behold, if you look, oh, I already did it. I already did it. So that means I can skip to the next one. So how about the next one? The next one you want to install is Snowball C. And I'm looking, I don't have Snowball C. So I'm just going to install from the drop down box. Now, you do have to pay attention when you're installing packages, because remember, this was originally a software program written in Unix. Okay, in Unix. And by the way, Macintosh computers, which were built the operating system in the Apple OS is based on you a Unix like system. Capitalization matters. Okay. In Windows, capitalization does not matter. So in this case, what we're looking for is Snowball C with a capital S. Notice if in the graphic installation program, notice I can type lower cases all in the entry box and it still gives me an option for Snowball C. However, in the console, if you had typed lowercase s, because it's a console or a terminal package, it would say can't find it. Okay, so uh, in Windows software, capitalization doesn't matter, everything else it matters. In this case, I'm just going to say go ahead and install. And there we go. Notice I already got my greater than symbol there. And if you want to double check, look at the lower right hand side and let's take a peek. And notice right here, we see Snowball C. So we've got Snowball C installed. The next one we need to load is Word Cloud. So I'm going to use the same process here. Oops. We're going to use Word Cloud and install. As I recall, the TM package takes about the longest. So if you're still waiting on the packages to install, if you're following along, that's fine. The next one to install is R Color Brewer. Okay, this is important for creating color. And there it is, R Color Brewer. And we're going to install this. So our color brewer is going to allow us to make plots and graphics with unique color schemes. And there we go. Now what we need to do, we've got our software installed. What we need to do is actually load the library. So we need to load those packages into current memory. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going we do that by using this library command, you can see the commands all in the upper left quadrant, or the text editor. And so what we're going to do is we are just going to install a library. I use the quotes. And again, hit enter. I get a warning message because it was built under a different version of R that I'm running, but as long as there's no further error message, it's okay. Now, I could, of course, type library, look for my quote,
and load snowball C. Notice that one gave me no error message. All you get is a little greater than symbol. But you know, you only need to type library once because remember, we can use the advantage of the console to use the up arrow key, which repeats the last command. And now I will just adjust what's planning to be loaded, which in this case will be word cloud in parentheses, and of course hit enter. And notice what it did here. Our color brewer was actually required for word cloud so it went ahead and installed it for us. So we're really in great shape here to begin creating our word cloud. Now, I showed you a few of the other ones uh, that I've used in the past. And what I'm gonna do now is show you how to begin. Obviously, Part of the problem here is we need to get some kind of text file. What are we going to investigate? Okay. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different here. Uh, you can actually use the command to enter the text by choosing a file. And if you want to use that, the command will be uh, I'll write it down for you just so you could see it. In fact, I'm going to put it in the text editor. I don't want to put it in the co in the console just yet. And we're going to insult insert sorry text, and we use kind of this backwards arrow key, which is the less than symbol and the dash. And we want it to read lines. We want to choose a file. And generally, now you need to know the address of your file. So if we were to go into, and I'm going to stop the share, and I'm going to go ahead and open our file manager. Let me just share the file manager for you. By the way, I can't see, sorry, I'm not ignoring you, but I can't always see the, okay. I can't always see the chat. So if you ask a question in chat and I'm not answering, yell, <laughs> okay, yell. I'm sorry, I have a question. Yes. Um, I still can't get my Opera Quadrant um, to open up. Like I try re-uploading um, re re the, the the application is not, it's not, it's not showing me the upper quadrant. Okay, one sec. Uh, let me, okay, so hold on. I'm going to go back. Let's stop this share. Sure. And you're talking about in our studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to our studio. And uh, which quadrant can you not see? The top one. Sorry, the top one. So, okay. Where you have like, yeah. First question is check the bar and see if it's just like if it's just moved. Okay, let me see. Um, it's not. Oh, I think I'm. Yeah, I think I got it. Alternatively, you could go to the view menu. And you can use the view menu to manipulate which pane you see. Okay. Um, well, I got it, but my says untitled one is like the whole thing's empty. I don't see like all those um, installed. Well, that's because I, I, I type these in. Oh, okay. So I just type them there as a reference so I could show you while we're working. Got it. Thank you. So if you want, it, if you want them in there, you've got to type them. Sure. Okay. So let's go back to the file manager, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. 
And what I'm actually going to have you do is do a word cloud of your resume. So I'm sure all of you have a resume somewhere. And so what I want you to do is get a copy of your resume. Don't have to do it right now. Don't have to do it right now. But I am just, I thought I had a copy of my resume here. Let's look here. There we go. So here's a copy of my resume. It's a doc file. And so in this case, notice what I can do is I can right click on it and go to properties. And notice at the very top in properties, here is, we can go to details or in general, this tells you the location of it, okay? So if I want to insert it, I actually have to type C colon slash user slash Barbato G slash Dropbox slash GFB full resume, okay? So that's one way that you can do it. And in fact, if you look up, if you're using Windows, notice there is a copy path. So if I select on the full resume and go to copy path, I can now go back to my R Studio. And in between where it says read lines. And there you go. See, it automatically inserts the copied path. So again, uh, there are a lot of shorthand tricks. Now I want you to really get used to using the keyboard commands. You could always, you know, right click, paste, you could do the graphic commands, but uh, these are fairly small applications, so using your graphical commands or mouse clicks uh, really doesn't take you forever. But in my opinion, when you're working on much bigger files, which we'll get a chance to work on bigger files a little bit later in the semester, it is so much quicker to be able to use your keyboard commands. Uh, if you're on Windows, remember, Control-C is copy, Control-X is cut, and control V is paste. If you're on a Mac, it's your little command key. It's the one with the uh, little icon on it. You want to hold that and it's still that command C, command V, command X. So they're all the same letters. And again, these commands all derive from the old Unix operating system. And so they're the same in every single new operating system. But as I said, we're not going to use this particular file for now. I'm actually going to insert another file from the internet. And this is really a handy set of commands that you can get in R. And what I'm going to do is define a file path, which is going to enable me to import a file, sorry, I'm typing, from the internet. And I happen to have I'm getting there. And if I typed all that in properly, and I'll have these commands listed for you separately when I post up the video, 
what I'm doing is actually importing into R a document from the internet. And that's the great thing about this file path, okay, file path command. If you didn't want to have to type it all out, what you could do is just go on the internet, go to your web page, find the text file, copy the URL, and insert it into this file path command, okay? So I'm just going to hit enter, maybe. There we go. And notice, no bells ring, nothing bad happens. All I get is a little cute blue greater than sign, all right? So that means it worked. Now what I want to do is I want to define it with the word text, okay? So I want to call it because I don't want to have to constantly type in Martin Luther King, I have a dream speech dot text. Okay, I want to be able to shorthand it. So I'm going to call it text. Okay, and what I'm going to do is use the text, that arrow command again. I'm going to have it read the lines from that path. So if you haven't figured it out yet, and now I'm going to hit enter, what that kind of arrow that points to the left does is it defines the name of a variable. Okay, so we know that the file path is this big URL or internet address. But why constantly have to type and retype that in when you could just define it as the file path? Then we want to read we want to read that all of the information from that file into something called text. Okay? So, in case you want to take a peek at it, what we're going to do is we are going to import the text into something called docs and we're going to use another command vector source notice it's part of if you look when i'm starting to type vector source it's part of that tm or text mining software so we're going to use vector source what we just called text Okay, it's now entered it, and you could also look, notice what it's doing in the upper right-hand quadrant, okay? It's defining all of these values for us. So you can actually see what is going on in the computer kind of behind the scenes. So now let's inspect it. Inspect and we called it docs. Remember, that's the name of the file we use. And I'll hit enter. And look at what happened here. When we inspect the document, it basically prints out the entire speech. OK? It prints out the entire speech. It gives us a little bit of information. We have one document level. It hasn't been indexed. And the content has 46. And if you take a peek, you can wander through it. Basically, 46 paragraphs. All right. Some of them are blank. So what we really want to do now is be able to analyze the text. We have a little bit of a problem. And the little bit of a problem we have is all of the information that really is not capable of being indexed. So just look at the text. 
Is only tax there? You can say it. So what about no, there's numbers too. Yeah, it's got numbers. It's got all these special characters, right? It's got all sorts of strange special characters, commas, exclamation points, colons, all sorts of these things. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of them. Okay. We're going to replace all of these different characters with just a blank space. And we're going to do that by using uh, a couple of different commands. The first, of course, is a relatively simple content transformer function. I'm not going to try to type these in right now for you, but I will give you a list of them so you can copy and paste them if you want to use them a little bit later on. And that automatically replaces some of the weird ones. If you want to see what it looks like after we make the replacement, what we can do is use the up arrow to go to inspect docs and take a look at it again. Okay. And notice looks very similar except for certain bits of information, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to replace a little bit more stuff. So we're going to replace we're going to replace backslashes And that should be okay. And how about some of these other funky things we have? And for our purpose here, the other thing we do need to do is we need to get rid of uppercase and lowercase. So what we're going to do is again, using the docs command, we're going to take our docs, go to the content transformer, and we're going to put everybody to the lowercase you could do the same thing with uppercase. We're going to remove the numbers. Again, and you can use the shortcuts here. Remove the numbers that will get rid of all those numbers for the lines. Um, I always like one of the commands that is very useful uh, is one, again, it's the docs command, that TM map command. And what it does, if we're doing a, if we're doing a um, word map here, a word cloud, What this command allows us to do is get rid of all the common English words. So in other words, if we want to do a word cloud, do we really want every the to be present in a word cloud? Probably the number of times the word the or and or of or if any of the short words that are commonly found in the English language 
if you want to remove those for further analysis, because you don't want like a giant word and in the word cloud. You only want the relevant words. So handily, whoever wrote this package is giving us the ability to get rid of all common words. There is another command that you can use that will get rid of specific words. So instead of, uh, you can use the remove words commands, but instead of stop words, you can actually insert your own word. So you might want to, for example, if you are going to do your own uh, word cloud from your resume, you might want to get rid of your name because we already know it's you. Alternatively, as I did, which you saw last week, is I liked having it there because I was giving people the word cloud to describe who I was. So it's real nice to have your own name right there so it defines it as your word cloud. However, a couple things we do want to do is, of course, do things like remove punctuation. So we are going to, I'm going to use my up key. So instead of, we're going to take our TM map, go to docs, remove punctuation. We are also going to remove all of the white spaces. Oops. And then we're going to shorten up the document, which will allow us to get rid of all of the carriage returns. So we're going to use doc and the command for that is to stem document. And there we go. So we're almost to the point now. And let's go ahead and take a quick peek. Let's inspect it and see what happened to it. Back, it's only got my original document, sorry. Let's, let's do it this way. There we go. One second. Okay. And there we go. So what this does is what I really did was put this into a matrix. Okay. I put this into a matrix and this is giving the word frequency of a variety of different names. Now notice what seemed to happen here is the and and are still being included in the count of words, okay? So something went wrong when we tried to remove the common English words, all right? So we can go back and we can do the remove command, which we can double check like this. I'm just using my up key, right? So 
So that should, the stop words should give us, should eliminate all of those short English words. Double check it. Ah, maybe I mistyped something. And this is something, unfortunately, that we get to do over and over again is try to figure out what we did wrong. <laughs> TNAP. Error in use method, TMAP, no applicable method. Well, let me try to retype it. Maybe I got a character in there. Docs, TM, map. Remove words. Stop words. English. Let's see what happens. Huh. I don't know why we're getting that English, that method, but uh, that error message, but we'll just have to hang on to it. Let me see if we redo, and again, this is the beauty of this, is we can use the up and down key. Let's go ahead and see if I can regain I'm just going to rework these to make it uh, have it make a new table for us. Nope. I will have to find out why that's not working, but it's okay because it just means we have one extra word in our word cloud. This is really just to give us a little bit of an indication. Now, what we're going to do from here is actually generate the word cloud. Now, these commands are not things that you have to memorize. They're already listed for you. What we're going to do is we are going to set the seed for this. This is just a number to start the jet to generate the position of all of the words in our word cloud. One second. Let's make our lives easy. Now, notice I've got a couple of different things going on here. All right. So the command is really, remember, we loaded the program called word cloud. We're going to use all the words from our frequency distribution here, a minimum frequency of one, maximum number of words 200. Uh, we are not going to put them into a random order. We're going to rotate them about a third, so it's 0.35. We're going to rotate the words, and I happen to like the dark theme, okay? So that's why we're using the dark theme. If you wanted to use a different one, you could go to uh, all of the documentation for Word Cloud and look up another theme. I like this one, so that's why we're doing it. And now from here, I hit enter. And notice on the right hand side, in our space is the word cloud of all of the text from Dr. King's speech. Unfortunately, 
you could see the problem with including the word the. All right. So one way that we could fix this is to utilize uh, the command. See if I get this right. We're going to use the TM map command. Uh, let's see. We're going to, we got to do it in docs. We're going to remove words. Comma. And I'm going to remove the words the. And we may as well get rid of the word and. Uh, any other words you see there? How about this? Um, Will. Good. Oops. Got to remember your quotes. Oh, what was the other one? How about there? Well, that's enough for now. I, I like will because it might mean human will, not just you will do something. You know, you have to think about that's the human part. Let's see if I remembered the commands. You never know. What about from? Uh, yeah, I got from. Now let's see if it worked. <laughs> we have to go back and generate the matrix. So we're going to generate the matrix. Come on. We'll know pretty quick if this is going to work or not, because we'll get we'll either get the right matrix or we won't. <laughs> I don't like that warning message. It's not an error. Huh? Ah, oh, there we go. I remembered. <laughs> Shocker. So I'll make sure and include that command. So notice the word V, the word from, etc., are gone. It looks like we have a weird word here. Ever I, it must have uh, got rid of space. But meanwhile, let's redraw it. Okay. So we're going to set our seed. And now we'll we redraw the word cloud. Ta-da! <laughs> so there you go. Uh, you now have a word cloud from Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech with most of, you know, you could always go back and redo this, get rid of perhaps uh, into I don't know why that one ended up not being deleted. It should have based on that word list. But you really have a sense here uh, of really the topics that he was talking about when he gave the speech by looking at the words he emphasized over and over again. So this is a really clever little use, a good way to learn our studio fun way. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the share here. And a nice way for you to actually jump in and actually create your own word cloud. Now, uh, I think it's a great idea if you have your very own, um, if you have your own resume, uh, this is a fun way to present yourself to people by doing a word cloud of your resume, okay? And the reason that it's a nice way to do it is what it does is it gives you an opportunity to see if the words that you're using actually express what you're trying to communicate in your resume, all right? Because the words that you use matter and the frequency with which you use them matter. 
So if you're applying, and I'll just, you know, we'll make up something very quickly. If, if, uh, if for example, I'm applying for a job at Stockton and I want to be able to teach genetics, I better hope that the word genetics shows up in my word cloud. Okay, I want to make sure, uh, and I'll let's see if I can get you back to my word cloud here quickly. I think I can do this pretty easily, maybe. <laughs> you never know. There you go. So just to show you, here's mine. Uh, I left my name there, Barbato. Okay, now notice I've got science. Genetics doesn't really show up maybe the way I want. And poultry is awful, awful big. So I might want to go back into my resume and say, you know what? Every time I put the word poultry in, maybe I should put the word avian in. Maybe I should uh, try to emphasize genetics, add some headers that say genetics of growth or genetics of poultry or uh, genetic analyses, you know, I can do it. So that way it really helps to emphasize what your level of expertise is. And the same is true of any word cloud. I, I think I have one, I probably showed you. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, I did one from the U.S. Constitution, so this was one I made in previous years. You could tell that the um, uh, the resolution of the word cloud isn't so great, but you could really see, you get a sense, boy, what's really important, what is it that the U.S. Constitution really defines? Well, what it really spends a lot of time talking about are the states, <laughs> that they are united, but also tremendously detailed about what the role of the president is in the Constitution. And historically, this is important because remember when the United States was formed, what was the big fear of the founding fathers? Anybody know, just offhand? What was their biggest fear? Becoming just like the country they seceded from. Absolutely. And having a king, that would be like the worst. So there was a tremendous effort to talk about the role of the, to talk about the role of the president and specifically define all of the powers, responsibilities, but also the limitations. So anyway, it's a great way to look at text information. Uh, we're going to find that there are a couple of other ways to look at text information. And on Thursday, we'll go through some of those. I think we're kind of all had enough. <laughs> this, is, this is so much better to do in person if we're all in the same computer lab, but I think on Zoom, it's like a ton of information. So I, I don't wanna push it any further, okay? So I will post the recording of this session as well as post a list underneath the video uh, in the page on PB Works so you can have access to all of the commands. Okay? So are we submitting a word cloud or? Oh, good point. Thanks. <laughs> yes. You're to make a word cloud and submit it. And in order to do that, uh, losing my mind. You think it's long for you? It's hard for me. Uh, where's PB Works? I can't find it. Don't panic. I'll get there. Ah, there it is. There we go. There it is. So here I'm sharing PB Works. And what we're going to do is under the assignments tab, and you can get there. I'll just go back to the main page. You can get there by looking at pages and files tab up at the top. 
under the assignments tab, I'm going to create a folder. called word clouds. And when you've made your word cloud, what you'll actually do is because you're all writers in the wiki, all you'll have to do is come up here, create a page. Create my page. This will be for my word cloud. You have to edit it. And all you have to do is insert your picture. Okay, and put it right in there. Okay. So pretty easy. I mean, it's not hard. Um, and let's make, let's try to get them done by next Tuesday. And so that way we can share some of them and look at some other ways to put things together. Anybody has any problems, we can deal with them on Thursday. Okay, so if you give it a try or at least get to going, uh, it usually takes a couple hours to convert the Zoom meeting into a video. And then I'll put up the commands and stuff. So probably by this evening, it'll be up. Okay. All right, everybody go outside and hope we don't get more snow. <laughs> All right, take care, Professor. All right, you guys take care. Hi, Professor. Have a good day. Y'all have too. a good day. You too.